Hi, I'm Rory Green from XR Today, and we are speaking to Ahom Ibrahim of Immersive Tech Africa. We're exploring the global reach of AR, VR, MR solutions, and there's no one, no one better to do this with than someone leading the XR revolution. Uh, uh, Ahom, could you please introduce Immersive Tech Africa and perhaps how the region is adopting XR technology and what your firm is also doing to help that adoption? Okay, great. Um, thank you so much, Rory, for the amazing introduction. Um, my name is Arme Ibrahim. I am the Executive Director of Immersive Tech Africa. I am based in Abuja, Nigeria. And together with my team, we are championing and supporting the next generation of emerging tech content creators on the African continent. Um, Immersive Tech Africa was founded in 2020. It's a non-profit organization committed to democratizing access to extended reality and also artificial intelligence technologies through education, training, and also research. And our very big goal is to build a thriving and inclusive tech community on the African continent. Fantastic. And then could you give us a little bit of an intro into the uh, timeline of Immersive Tech Africa, perhaps how long this has been going on for, and then what the adoption of XR technology looks like in Africa from that time period also? Okay, so our journey started since 2019, a bit into the pandemic. Um, we noticed that there were not a lot of conversations around what is happening with XR in Africa. And together with my team, we first of all started an online webinar. Uh, where we invited guests and speakers to come and share what they are doing with XR, what are some of their challenges and experiences. And then that grew into a community um, where we now decided to register it as an official nonprofit. And our goal so far is to see how we can not just train, but also support and mentor creatives and young developers that want to build with XR. And to be sincere, the journey has been amazing. We have so far had talents that are building with XR for education, for e-commerce, and a couple of them also working in the enterprise space at the moment. So that's brilliant. Let's talk about that enterprise space there and some of those use cases you've mentioned. You mentioned technology and verticals there as well. Um, can you perhaps give us a little bit of an example and a little bit of an idea as to how the region is leveraging XR technologies and perhaps some of those other pieces in there like digital twins, AI that you mentioned, and how are these technologies helping African businesses to grow um, today and helping today's workforces? Great. Thank you so much for the question. For me, I would say the journey so far has been amazing. Um, I've had the opportunity to work on a couple of projects, um, enterprise-based projects that have so far deployed XR uh, mainstream. Um, I'll be giving three key examples. The first one is by MTN Nigeria. So MTN Nigeria is like the largest telecommunication company on the African continent with close to 70 million plus um, users. Um, so two years ago, they wanted to see how they can engage their customers, their high network customers in a virtual environment. And together with the team, we deployed the MTN Yellowverse, which is the first um, enterprise-based metaverse on the African continent. And the result of that deployment was, was simply amazing. Um, we had 10,000 users adopting the experience during launch. And for us, it's now how can we now do more of this, of such use cases here in Africa? Um, I also love to mention a use case that was this, this deployed in South Africa by um, a bank called um, Netba NetBank. Um, so basically, NetBank is now regarded as the first African bank to enter into the metaverse. Their goal basically was to create a virtual engagement platform for their users. Um, they can engage with their, maybe for example, front-end customers in a virtual environment, address their queries or problems that they may have. And lastly, I would love to mention a platform that is leveraging on cryptocurrency and e-commerce. Um, it's basically called Africa Rare. Um, so Africa Rare is a 3D virtual reality experience platform that is set in Ubuntu land um, with the goal of merging um, cryptocurrency and e-commerce whereby you can conduct transactions in a virtual environment and also engage with other users who are in the crypto space, right? Um, in terms of enterprise, those are three amazing use cases that have been deployed so far on the African continent. 
Brilliant, thank you. And before we dive into some of the vendors behind that, um, what what was the reactions like with the um, en with enterprises adopting XR um, in the region? Was it positive reaction? Then perhaps also, what was it like for the users, say, um, who were adopting the virtual banking system? Mm. I'd say for the for the companies and the enterprise users, um, adopting emerging tech was a plus for them because they are now seen as more futuristic. Um, so basically moving from 5G technology to VR and the metaverse was simply amazing. And now we have AI, right? So now it's not like a stack of um, tools that they need to deploy with for their target users. But it's super amazing that they deployed it. A lot are now considering deploying XR um, mainstream. And for users, it's now having a company or being part of a company that is very, very engaging and futuristic again. Um, for most end users is how can these companies not just leverage on traditional technology but adopt what's going on globally. And it's glad to see that some of these organizations are, are moving so fast, right? Um, a couple of them are now moving as fast as having like um, 3D robotics and uh, maybe leveraging on AI to build some of their front end um, consumer experiences, still leveraging on um, VR and AR. Um, for example, um, MTN just recently released a digital experience center whereby users can just walk in, get a virtual SIM card, engage with some of their products and services, even um, also experience their, their VR platform um, when needed. Fantastic, brilliant. And now moving away from the enterprise face or the enterprise end users, etc., um, it would be mm -hmm. great to learn a little bit more about some of the XR firms and some of the vendors that are helping to push this revolution forward. I know from our previous conversations, you've had experience with uh, groups like Meta, but then also I imagine there's some smaller companies as well who are helping yeah. to distribute this technology to enterprise. It'd be great to learn a little bit more about some of the companies that are working around the area. Yeah, cool. Um, I was. I would love to mention two two that are focusing on. Um, WebXR, right? Um, the thing with Africa is we have a lot of mobile-based users. Close to 500 million people have access to mobile devices, which is like a very huge market for mobile-based AR experiences and um, WebXR, right? Because there's not everybody that can afford a full VR headset at the moment, right? So a platform, for example, um, SwiftXR. So SwiftXR is a no-code WebXR platform that supports small businesses to deploy 3D model related versions of their products or services on the web. Um, a typical example is, for example, maybe a company that is into furniture um, that wants to maybe showcase what they are building to their users um, at the end. Um, they could deploy with SwiftXR, whereby they, there's a 3D model of that particular furniture deployed on the web the users can just click on it and see how that furniture will look like in their environment. Um, I'm glad to say that that has been successfully deployed. Um, so SwiftXR partnered with a company called um, Taylor to deploy um, that particular feature on Taylor's website. So Taylor is a furniture brand based in Lagos, Nigeria. And the feedback has been amazing. Um, users, no matter where they are in Africa, can preview what furniture they want to buy change the colors in the environment before making that particular purchase. Um, secondly, I would love to say a brand that is based in South Africa. Um, they are called Eden, um, Eden South Africa. They, they launched basically the first VR headset developed in Africa called the Eden Snacker, right? With the Eden Snacker, you don't need to have a strap over your head when you're wearing the VR headset. It's handheld and you like basically hold it over your face and your target market basically is um, patients in the hospital so kids that are in the hospital that don't have access to maybe going out to experience um, how the world look like they can with the Edding Snacker they can explore virtual environments um, become more energized um, in the hospital and basically make the environment more friendly and conducive for the patients so those are basically two key projects and um, platforms that are so far pushing the adoption of XR on the African continent. Brilliant, really interesting stuff. And just before we wrap up, you mentioned the all that web XR stuff. That's really great. And then also how you know it's being leveraged on smartphones and devices yeah. that aren't headsets. 
Um, just from your experience, how key do you think WebEx are and then smartphone and headle headsetless um, devices and project solutions, etc. How key is that to the adoption of XR, not just in Africa, but it reflective worldwide? For me, I always say accessibility is very important, right? Even though XR is super amazing, a lot of people still don't know what it is. A lot of people have, n have never experienced what XR is. And I feel for us in Africa, we are starting with what we have, mobile devices. Everybody has the mobile devices, the mobile device, sorry, right? So now we are pushing for more AR-based experiences and WebXR experiences. So we don't limit the barrier of entry for those users, right? Rather, we are increasing it. And in the long term, they can afford a VR headset and they can explore a full VR experience. But I believe in the coming years, um, just like how we have cheap and affordable mobile devices would have headsets readily available for users across the globe. And it's just a matter of time, basically. Um, huge investment in the XR space would help to, to achieve that in the coming years. And also the talent, right? We need to have those that can build for XR, not just consume it, but build amazing experiences that can change several industries across the world. Fantastic. Thanks so much for that. So much great insight. Um, and before we wrap up, could you perhaps tell our readers, Aram, where the best place for them to learn more about not just Immersive Tech Africa, but perhaps about more about how um, businesses are leveraging, again, XR in that region, uh, website, social media link, etc. Where's best for them to go? Sure. Um, we're available across all social media handles. So you can search for Immersive Tech Africa on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. And our website is also available at um, www.immersivetechafrica.org. You can also find me on LinkedIn at Arume Ibrahim, and I'm open to conversations and engagements. Brilliant. Thank you so much. I um, appreciate your time so much today. It's been great to learn uh, all about Immersive Tech Africa and something a little bit different than what we uh, cover on the show. So that's absolutely yeah. fantastic. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much. Brilliant. I'm Rory Green from XR Today. Thank you very much for watching. You can get more news by following XR Today on online social channels and on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching.